doesn't mean it's the end of America, but it might be the end of it as we know it. Hello, my loves. We are back with the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. I am so excited to have you here. So if you are a past listener, we've been on a hiatus for about a year. And to be honest, when I last posted February 2021 for the podcast, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a pause or the end because I was feeling overwhelmed and I needed to just cut things out of my life. And the podcast was one of those things that I decided to just stop doing for the time being. But in the year, since I stopped, I have been itching to get it started again because truthfully, I missed having these conversations with our guests because each time I talk to someone new, I learn so many new things, I get inspired. And to be honest, I was missing that social aspect in my life because I don't really talk to that many people in my everyday life. So this really is my way to connect and network and learn from a lot of people who inspire me. So yes, I'm very happy that we are back and we are back better than ever. So let me share a couple new updates for the Lavender Lifestyle 3.0, I want to call it. So the first update is we are now a video podcast. So if you're listening to this in audio form, know that you can see my face. You can see the guest face. We're now in video. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Lavender Lifestyle. And I also want to share our updated mission for the podcast because you know we always have to be evolving and leveling things up. So the new mission for the conversations and the guests I want to bring on to this podcast is really exploring how can we shine as our brightest selves and build a better world together. So at the heart of it, you know, Lavender is always going to be about the same things, you know, under this umbrella of how to become our best self and create our dream lives. I still believe we're each an artist of life, meaning we have the power to create the life that we want. But to me, the next level of that is really how do we utilize our light and come together to really rebuild this world in a way that will be better. I'm not going to define what that looks like, but it's an exploration. I feel like the past couple years have been crazy. (laughs) A lot has happened. It's been tough times for a lot of people out there and a lot of our systems are breaking down. I feel like we all can feel it. We all can feel that the world is changing And with that type of change comes a new opportunity. I know it's very tough and it can be scary going through that change, but there is opportunity to be able to rebuild from a new foundation. And so I want to explore that in this podcast. I'm here to bring guests that can help us tap into our light level up our consciousness, guests that will help empower us to be our brightest self and empower us, give us new ideas, new knowledge, and new wisdom on how we can utilize our gifts and our light to build a better world together. To me, these two things go hand in hand because as you step into your fullest potential and shine as your brightest self, naturally you're going to be a light in the world and you're going to inspire and influence the people around you. And it's kind of like a ripple effect of positivity and naturally that helps create a better world. So it's not that you're doing these two things separately, but it all happens. It's all intertwined happening at the same time. On that note, I'm super excited to get into today's episode where we will be discussing the macro trends happening in our world according to astrology. So remember when I said this world feels like we're going through so many changes, things are breaking down, it seems like life will never be the same. Well, all of this is reflected in the stars, in astrology. And I have been passionate about astrology since 2018. Even before that, when I was young, when I was like a preteen, I would read horoscopes and I would know my sign and my friend's sign, but that's beside the point. Today's episode is a macro view 
of the times that we are living in right now. I think it's such a fascinating topic, so I'm excited to bring on Ophira A. Dut. So Ophira is one half of the identical twin sister astrologer duo known as the Astro Twins. They reach millions worldwide through their website, AstroStyle, and as the official astrologers for Elle magazine, bringing the stars down to earth with their lifestyle and coaching-based approach to horoscopes. As best-selling authors, they've written a collection of books, including Astro Astro Style, Love Zodiac, Shoe Astrology, and Mom Astrology, and their own brand imprint of annual horoscope guides. So without further ado, here's the interview with Ophira Adut. Hello, Ophi. Welcome to The Lavender Lifestyle. I am so excited to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I love how you do your site and your astrology and your design. It's just such a great package. Thank you so much. And I did have the pleasure of talking to your sister the last time on this podcast, the other Astro Twin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. my turn. Now it's so. your turn. I'm so happy and excited to hear what you have to say. So last time, I think I discussed the pandemic and COVID with your sister. This time around, we have something else on our hands. So I I really, (laughs) I know there's so much to talk about. I really, I, first of all, I'm fascinated by astrology. I love it. I've been learning astrology since 2018, just so you know, but I, I think it's just so interesting, the times that we're going through. There's a lot of macro trends that are happening. And I know our listeners might not be experts. They're definitely not experts at astrology for the most part. So how can you break down what's happening in society according to astrology? Yeah. Well, kudos to you because if you've only been studying for 2018, I can see that you dove right in <laughs> I did. and uh, really went in, went for it. Um, well, I mean, astrology is a study of the cycles of history and time. So it's not just a tool for predicting the future, but also making sense of the past and the present. So that's something that a lot of people don't realize. And I, you know, what I really love about how you've taken astrology on is that you are interested in these big macro cycles, whereas a lot of people are kind of just looking at their daily horoscope and what's happening right now. Yeah. And um, I think both are important, but, you know, history is a great indicator of what what may be coming up and the opportunity to do things differently. So um, 2022 was an interesting time to say the least (laughs) because we, um, you know, we had a, we had, we're at the end of a very big Pluto cycle, it's called. So the the planets all move through the entire Zodiac wheel at, at various rates, depending how close to the sun they are. And what we have are called the outer planets, you know, we're some, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, they move in slower cycles. So we can see them shaping big trends. And we're almost at the end of a 16 year cycle of Pluto, the great transformer uh, that destroys in order to rebuild going through Capricorn, the sign mm. of governments, the economy um, since 2008. And we've certainly seen politics and economies and governments and financial systems changed uh, uh, forever by Pluto. Um, so, and its last trip there was in the 1700s. So that's one of the big things that's happening in 2022 that, you know, you're saying the cycle is about to end out of Capricorn. Yeah, the cycle of Pluto and Capricorn. Yeah. So it was, you know, it, and it's going to move into Aquarius officially from 2024 to 2044. Now, the last time it was in Aquarius was the late 1700s when we saw uh, the U.S. dollar was minted right. and became the official currency. So now we're looking at, you know, cryptocurrency and financial systems changing. So. When I'm when I'm looking at astrological trends, I like to see well what happened the last time that planet was there, you know, eighty or one hundred sixty or two hundred fifty years ago, and how is that similar to what might be happening now? I see. So, so to make put it in simpler terms, Pluto kind of defines. Would you say a generation or it? 
it defines something, right? There. Yes, it's it does. So that's yeah, that's great. And you know what? If you if we got too deep too soon, we can back it up. And get yeah, that, you know, yeah. So macro. Maybe we should start with micro for the newcomers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure <laughs> it makes sense to people. Right? Right? Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Let's make sure it makes sense. So how can I say it? So it's um. So. Pluto stays in a sign for 12 to 20 years and people born during that phase are, you know, their generation is shaped by that Pluto sign. Um, so that's, that's one example of a macro. When you say macro trend, you're talking about like a bigger generational pattern, like, you know, the millennials, the centennials, the swipe tablet generation, you know, the video game generation. The, um, so those all do align with planetary movements and, uh, and cycles. So that's, that's one way of using astrology in a macro way. Right. And there's, there's two things happening with Pluto. Cause you mentioned it's going from Capricorn to Aquarius soon. And then mm-hmm. we also have something called the Pluto return <laughs> that the U S is yeah. going through. I want you to explain to our audience, what is a Pluto return and what are the implications for us? Mm-hmm. Well, I have a feeling your audience may be the first return that they'll be coming upon or have just passed as a Saturn return. Right. So so a return, uh, this is how I like to describe uh, the Zodiac. So imagine you're lying on a field on a picnic blanket, grassy field, looking up at the sky and watching all the planets moving like a clock, you know, at their individual rates. And when you were born, it's like someone was lying on their back looking at the sky and took a screenshot of the sky. And that's your birth chart. So it's a freeze frame it's a one of a kind image and it's kind of the instruction manual that each person comes with. So um, when uh, one of those planets in your chart, like let's just say, you know, you were born when Pluto was in Scorpio, for example, well, 248 years later, Pluto is going to return to the same point in the sky that it was when you were born. If you were lying in that same grassy field, watching the sky 30 years, 29 to 30 years later, Saturn will return to that same point in the sky. So when that happens, it's like an activation. It's like, I'm back and it's time for the next round of lessons or experiences or that sort of thing. So since Pluto is the farthest away from the sun, it takes about 248 years to make a complete revolution. So we'll never have an individual Pluto return, but the United States just had one Mm -hmm. on February 20th, 20th, 21st, 22nd were the dates that we were really focused in on. And that was for the first time since July 4th, 1776. Right. And what do you know? A war broke out. (laughs) Wow. So, but what does that mean when Pluto goes back to that original spot? Mm -hmm. So we look at what Pluto is the planet of. It's a planet of destruction and rebirth, things rising from the ashes, transformation. It's the planet that represents power. And um, so it's going, it could have, you know, it's subject to interpretation, but what I've been looking at for the last couple of years is like, will it mean the end or transformation of the empire? If the United States was founded when Pluto was at 27 degrees and 33 minutes Capricorn measured by nerdy astrologers. <laughs> well, the first time it comes back to that, um, what's that going to mean? Is that that's mm-hmm. the completion of whatever happened as the declaration of independence was signed. It doesn't mean it's the end of America, but it might be the end of it as we know it. It uh, might be, I see. Well, yeah. It's a rebirth. So it's, like it could, it's a rebirth. I yeah. I see. Yeah. I, I think I read somewhere online that, a lot of civilizations are kind of defined by this like 250 ish year period. Like obviously some civilizations last longer, but it's, there's always something crazy that happens. Right. Or well, absolutely. Yeah, it kind of defines the rise and fall or, and the phases that um, like a nation mm-hmm. or civilization could go through. 
Well, that would be Pluto yeah, for sure. Definitely. Exactly. Maybe, yeah. So it, maybe it lasts a thousand years, mm-hmm. but there's four phases in there. So 500 years ago, you know, the Mexicans came and invaded the Aztecs. Mm. And so that was another Pluto and Capricorn I see. 27 cycle. So, and so, yeah. I- I guess you said the Pluto return happened on February 20th. Is it a one, obviously it's not a one day thing, right? Like how long does this phase last? Right. Because Pluto moves so slowly, we're going to feel it all year long um, and even into next year. But the exact, exact moment was on February 20th. So um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and so, but knowing, yeah. I guess, knowing this, how do we as individuals prepare? Because this, you know, it does yeah. affect the whole nation or even the world. Yeah, I think that's a great question because, you know, a, lo- a lot of us who are into astrology are also into consciousness mm-hmm. and light work right. and anything but war. So this can be a very uncomfortable thing. I'm, I'm sure you found this too. I'm, I'm curious to hear your opinion as well. But, you know, it's almost as, you know, it's like we now have to acknowledge something that is a reality of history Mm -hmm. and yet not condone it, of course. But, you know, there are some people in sort of the healing and and astrology worlds are like, well, don't talk about it. Like, don't, don't, uh, you're encouraging it by talking about it or you're feeding it or the law of attraction. And the thing is, I see astrology as, like a tool, a measuring tool or information, a system so that we can plan, not so that we're making it, you know, making things worse. So to answer your question, how can we prepare? Well, we should know that we may be in a time of war for a while. We, we want to, you know, adjust our, you know, we want to be careful with money. We may need to adjust for, pricing and supply. We've already learned, you know, the lessons that the pandemic prepared us for to like pivot and prepare to spend more on certain products or order things differently or work together with people or adapt our lifestyles. You know, I think it's, it's to have a, a willingness to work with each other to, make sure that we can sustain ourselves. Um, What are you finding? I'm curious. I mean, Uh, listening to what you have to say, to me, it sounds like we have to, number one, accept that we're going through something like this. We we can't, we're not in a stage of denial. We can't go backwards to the way things used to be. There's no going back, Right. right? The world is changing as we know it. And the, I guess what you can do is just do the very best that you can focus on what you can control on focus on what you can control is what I always like to say, because these big things are often way out of our control. (laughs) We're just living in it. Absolutely. It it is. And I think, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a harsh awakening for some of us, for most of us, because we do kind of operate like we are in, in the, in the free world, like we are in control of our realities. We are a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I think that's kind of a big theme that's coming up too, like with data and privacy and everything else. People are like, how much of my reality do I really control? Mm -hmm. So what we want to be prepared for is that those are going to be some of the main themes of the 2020s and 30s. You know, um, we may see shifting geographical, geopolitical territories Mm -hmm. and that the world as we know it will definitely be redrawn, I think. <laughs> Definitely. I think the past couple of years, just learning about this shift, I, cause I learned the Pluto returns happening in the U.S.'s second house, the house of like money and finances. So I, I have been learning more about economy and money and I, I at the very least, how to protect yourself from what might happen. Right. And so that's great. I, I guess that's one small way of what I was doing personally, if, if anyone out there was curious. Um, but let's talk about this shift then. What like Pluto going from Capricorn to Aquarius, what does that mean? And people always say the, we're in the age of Aquarius. Is that the same thing yeah. as Pluto and Aquarius? You no, know, let's. 
the age of Aquarius is so debated. Like yeah. some people think it started in the 1960s with the the hippie movement because it, some Aquarius represents those kind of utopian society ideals, but it's also the sign of technology and innovation. So I think it's sort of drip, you know, it's the water bearer. So it's been kind of dripping out of the water bearer jug for the past 50 years. But I feel like when we had the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, a lot of people were talking about that on the winter solstice of 2020. That's when Jupiter and Saturn were together in Aquarius oh, right. for the first time since the 1600s. I think that began uh, the at least the Aquarian era or decade, uh, because now we're moving toward all these Aquarius ideals of sharing and, you know, having to it's completely redrawing society, if that makes sense. I, yeah, I want you to explain what is Aquarius, because for people who don't really know the yeah. signs, what does what's Aquarian tendencies or characteristics? Mm-hmm. There's a funny thing about Aquarius. It's, it's like a paradox, because before Uranus was discovered by telescope in 1781, Aquarius was believed to be ruled by Saturn. Now, Saturn is the planet of repression. It's like the strict high school principal. But after Uranus was discovered, it became the ruler of Aquarius. And Uranus is like the rebellious teenager. Mm-hmm. And the reason it was assigned to Aquarius to your to Aquarius is because it spins on its side and Aquarians are known to be kind of they do their own thing they spin on their own you know they they walk their own way so but it's it's got this uptight type A side to it that's very organized and then it's got this wild nomadic boho side and so uh, we're finding, you know, Aquarius is also the sign of individuality and groups and friendships and teams. So mm-hmm. how the hell can you be right. all of those it's things? It's a lot of things. And technology it's and science, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Science, technology, and progressive ideals. Although I will say that we are seeing a lot of like the tech movement and people in technology being really into, you know, crypto and and data uh, and Web3 and you owning your own data and that sort of thing. So I feel like that it's so it's become very Aquarian up in here for I the agree. last couple of years. I agree. The whole yeah. trend of Web3 decentralization, isn't that very Aquarius? Very much like, so. I, think very. The, I mean, the macro trend that I see is like everything centralized, like governments or banks are like breaking down and it's making exactly. way for a new system where things are more spread out to the people, more decentralized. I think a lot of people are going that way. Um, So that to me is Aquarius. But of course, there's pros and cons of both, right? Like they're basically two extremes. And yeah, it's interesting to me. Yeah, you're totally right on. Totally right on. It's true. like Because you're going to see evangelists for both of those. You're going to see people who are like, let's give the data back to the people. And then there's going to be a person like, I can't run my own server. Yeah, exactly. I can't live on a farm and support myself and everything. Exactly. Like, I don't know if I want to live off the grid. Exactly. I wanted a chicken, maybe a rubber (laughs) chicken, you know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll order chicken, but you know, but yeah, so it's it's you know, we're still figuring it out. But it's also kind of the overlap of that aqua Saturn, which mm-hmm. is the ruler of Capricorn. Mm. Now Saturn is also r- the ruler of Capricorn. So Aquarians are kind of part Capricorn, is oh. how I see it. They're like a hybrid alien <laughs> kind of <laughs> love child of Sa- of Capricorn. I see. So so to give um an example of a Pluto trend, a full Pluto cycle from 1995 to 2008, Pluto was in Sagittarius and that was Sagittarius rules publishing. Mm. So at the t- when it first entered, it came in like a wrecking ball on the publishing industry. It was like, I was in my twenties at wow. that early twenties at that time. And it was like, I loved a bookstore. It was like, everything was magazines, books, Barnes and Noble, you know, it was like bookstore culture. And then along came the internet and uh, completely kind of obliterated for a minute Mm -hmm. or turned upside down, you know, print publishing as we knew it. So the internet came when Pluto was in Capricorn or? 
Uh, Sagittarius. So, oh, Sagittarius. Oh, I see. So yeah, that's the yeah. transformation. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, it was 1995 um, to 2008. Oh, so I see. everything was print. And then the web started, mm-hmm. you know, really, I remember my friends starting to get their first dot com jobs in like 1996, 97. And that was like the first web one kind of time. Oh my gosh. So um, can you say, oh, I just had a realization is web one Sagittarius when Pluto was in Sagittarius, web two could be when Pluto was in Capricorn. Cause you said 2000. Yeah, I think it right? is. It was, yeah, so exactly. Pluto was in Capricorn during social media when Facebook started and all of that. And then yeah. now we're entering web three almost. And that is Pluto in Aquarius. That was Ooh. good. Absolutely. <laughs> that gets me yeah. excited for some reason. Uh. Yeah, and me too, <laughs> because I love when the planet, this is exactly the macro, this is the beauty yeah. of astrology, like how I wish more people, uh, well, it's, it's up to us, I guess, people like us who live in both worlds mm-hmm. kind of to explain it. Right. Because a lot of people are either too astro geeky, and I'm trying my best not to be, <laughs> or they're don't know, you know, they don't know how to translate it. I think you do an excellent job of that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, web two is very Capricorn because it was when the big businesses and ads and sponsorships and companies, which is Capricorn started to kind of, you know, it became not so free, you know, and interesting. Yeah. People always talk about how web one in the nineties, early two thousands were more fun and open and, and then, and it becomes, it became very big tech and corporations just became a thing. Exactly. Oh, interesting. when, you know, the, the venture capitalists started to fund it. Right. You know, I mean, my first website I built in 1996 by hand, like, yeah. ooh, this is cool. It was like a <laughs> Star Wars astrology yeah. website. <laughs> um, and I was like, wow, because I was I was actually pub- I was a magazine publisher at that time. And I was like, oh my God, ink and paper are so expensive. Like, right. wow, I can actually so publish. Yeah, so it was super exciting. <laughs> Um, for indie publishers, the Pluto and Sagittarius time. So it it, tra- it left us with tablets, with the internet, with digital publishing, with, you know, Skype and being able to like, you know, I remember being like, wow, I had a boyfriend who lived 5,000 miles away in 2001. That was, was a little too soon. Uh, <laughs> and so like, I don't even, we couldn't even video shit. What was I yeah. thinking? Talk about like <laughs> giving yourself an uphill battle, know. you know, <laughs> swimming upstream. Uh, there was no WhatsApp. There was yeah, nothing. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know. What did we do? I think we emailed each other and then met in Paris, like Carrie Bradshaw and <laughs> Mr. B and broke up That afterwards. sounds romantic so. though. <laughs> it's like, it was. Right? Oh, okay. It was romantic, but oh, what it took to get there. Jeez. I so. bet. <laughs> Pluto trend. Um, but when it entered, you know, real quick, like when it entered Capricorn in 2008 into early 2009, bit the first Bitcoin blockchain was mine, January 3rd, 2009. Right. Um, uh, we had our, the first African American president. There's Pluto shaking up government mm, as we know it, I you know? See. And so, yeah, so that's what we've been dealing with. And we had an orange president halfway through. <laughs> and now, now in 2024, who knows what we're getting? Maybe an alien. I know. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> okay, that brings me to the next topic because I feel like money is an increasingly popular. It's, it's a big topic, right? Because things are changing in the finance world. So you have something on your blog called the Aquarian technocalypse, if I'm pronouncing that right, where you talk about Bitcoin and there's this chart, there's this thing called the Cardinal Cross. Can you explain that to our listeners? And I would, I'll put that chart on the show notes so you guys can see visually this cross that I'm talking about. Awesome. And I'm, we're uh, finishing up a little post about it because it now it needs an even more explaining too with the developments. So, um, we have one of my best friends of 20 years and a uh, fellow astrologer, Matthew Swan, who's an honorary astro triplet around here. Uh, <laughs> he's good. I read he, his articles. He's, he's so good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know. We're very lucky to have him because, I mean, I, I always call him the smartest person I know <laughs> and I've learned so much from him. Aww. And uh, so he, yeah, so he and I co-write a lot of those posts and we love, you know, we'll spend like a year looking at a chart. So in 
I don't like what I think we started to look at the chart of Bitcoin. And then we started in the summer of 2019, like started real. There were all these eclipses and Capricorn and cancer at that time. So we started looking at the USA. We started to notice um, there are there's a grouping of zodiac signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. Those are the signs that start every season again. Forgive me, uh, newcomers, <laughs> okay. for getting too astro-geeky. And those are the cardinal signs, right? It's those are the cardinal signs. Basically, they if you think of spring. the beginning of each season, it's the sign. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You feel free to jump in and bring it down. <laughs> I'll try to, to yeah, you. make it casual. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the, the solstices and the equinoxes. So, you know, we... We were, we were getting curious about, okay, well, when, okay, Bitcoin, wow, was uh, first mined January 3rd. So if you cast a chart, it's it's a Capricorn, 13 degrees Capricorn, you measure by days. And then we're like, well, let's look at the dollar. Oh, wow, that's 13 degrees Aries, another cardinal sign. And the USA, the 4th of July, huh, that's 13 degrees Cancer, how weird. And then we're like, well, what would be the other, the fourth cardinal sign, Libra? And we found, you know the Neptune of China. So we started, so we're going to be, I'll I'll give you the expanded chart, but we learned that Russia is also 13 degree Capricorn. Like it's wild to me. Why is it all the same degree? (laughs) I don't know. I don't, we're like, is it the tarot card? You know, that's the death card. I don't know. how, How probable is this is when I look at this. It's crazy. I, just, I know. I know. Matthew and I, we kind of debated. He was like, is there like a breakaway intelligence group that plans some? Do they, these people, do they know? I mean, you know, yeah. get into the conspiracy of Freemasons. Do they know <laughs> astrology? Are they, you know, aliens, UFOs? What's going on here? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, to yeah. break it down to our listeners who might not understand what we're talking about with the degrees, like basically the birthday of Bitcoin, the birthday of the U- U- United States, the birthday of the dollar and the birthday of the Chinese yuan, as well as you said, mm-hmm. Russia, you mean the birth yeah. of Russia? Russia, yeah. So the birthday uh-huh, the of Russia, modern. they yeah. exactly, oh my God, <laughs> they exactly yeah. make like a cross on the birth chart. Like if you were to draw... It's called a cross, right? Literally. Yeah, it's called and, a cross. And it's, it looks like a cross. Yeah, it's yeah. it's exact to the degree. And that to me is so weird. <laughs> it is so it's weird. And almost then divine. NATO, I don't know. Is a degree off. NATO okay. is 14 degree Aries. Okay. And I started looking at that this uh, this week even more because I'm like, and uh, ha- if you think about those, the cross, think about. Her, being at a, a four-way intersection yes. with your car. Yeah. Like, and if you don't respect the stop signs and go in order, so let's just say you all got there first or think you did. And nobody knows, you know, you, you all can go and ram into each other or you can figure out, well, why don't you go? And then I'll go, I'll wait <laughs> and you have to turn. So that's what we're at yeah. at this moment in history, this four-way intersection of the cardinal signs. Now, the, the cardinal signs, since they're the first signs of every season, you know, they're like the first born. They're a bit entitled. They're like, you know, you can see that Putin just invade, you know, just rushed right in. They don't mm-hmm. wait for anything. They're like, I'm doing this. I'm going to get mine. And so, you know, that's where I'm like, all right, we got to prepare for the things we can and can't control because these superpowers are certainly going to do whatever the hell they want and probably not so much care about what the people want. You mm-hmm. know? Um, and I want you to yeah. kind of explain in astrology when you have planets like directly across from each other or like 90 degrees, is, it's called a square. Like, yes. isn't that the most difficult pairing you could have? It's called a hard angle, or a, right. so it's it's very much like you have to negotiate. You're at this tug of war, and if you want to dance with each other, you have to do this push pull. So consider right. we've been doing that all along. Basically, That's you don't get along. Tension. It's difficult. <laughs> There's so much t- right. most tension you could possibly have. Um, yeah. yeah, or it can be this dynamic power couple okay. too. If you do, I mean. You know, China being a Libra and Russia being Capricorn. I mean, they're in the dance with each right. other right now. Yes. But 
but there's no loyalty to your dance partner. You're dancing together as long as it makes, as long as it serves you. Yeah. It's a very user friendly relationship. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I'm trying to make as many human metaphors as I can because I do believe that the planets can be personified in their energy. Yeah, I do like that. Um, okay, so I let's get into the implications of what what this really means, though. This cardinal cross does it just like it, it, there's no telling what's going to come out of it through astrology, or is there? Oh, there is because what you can also look at are the moving planets. So okay. one of the yeah, we're, we're gonna, let's surrender to the deep here. Yeah. We're rolling in the deep Go with the astrology. It. And we promise we'll give you show notes to explain some of this yes. and link them out to the post. Because I really, I think it's so important that, you know, people who are, tend to be sort of in the, the the fluffier, and I love fluff, I don't mean that <laughs> as an insult, but the more warm and fuzzy astrology, like we need to learn about technology, coding, money, and politics now from a, a totally different view, not a personal view, but like astrology, I feel like is a great lens to look at it through. So it's, it's neutral, you know? Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at it as neutrally as possible, you know, um, I would say the, the planets in the sky are always moving too. And there that's, you're talking about returns, for example. So the birth date chart of the dollar, the US, et cetera, never changes. It's like a frozen moment in time. But the planets overhead are always clicking around and moving. So they reach certain signs and points and activate energies. So right now we have Chiron, which is the wounded healer um, in some interpretations, uh, at the same degree as NATO's birthday sun. So we want to look at is NATO wounded and not respond, you know, by not feeling like they can go in? Or are they being this wise healer by holding back and not imposing total financial swift ban sanctions? I saw that on Twitter a little while ago, by not counterattacking. Are they being wise or are they imperiled? Because Chiron was shot in the Achilles tendon, I think, and wasn't able to, you know, to, to operate at full strength. So that's something I would look at too. So does that make sense? You look at the interplay yes. between the charts right. and the moving, that's the how, moving planets. Okay. And that's how you can start to predict. I you know? see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sure that can go really deep. So we don't have to go there today. But it, it does bring up it does bring up um, a question I got on Instagram from Lily, which I'll just ask now. She, yeah. she just is curious. Does anything in the stars forecast a potential world war? Like if you're looking at all these moving parts, is it definite? Is it clear? Or are we still, I don't know. How do you feel? I think the Cardinal Cross is a built-in world war. And I think what we want to do is rethink the word war the word war needs a little bit of a makeover mm, here okay. <laughs> like we are often at war with we're at war within ourselves all the time you know like what is i don't right it doesn't have to be physical war time. then it, it, it could be like yeah. ideologies or things like yeah. that yeah let's you know world war three you know we've been you know it's so like I hollywood <laughs> i'm not saying it is or isn't happening but i don't think we empower ourselves by going, ah, like when people say Mercury is retrograde, I'm going to go hide under the bed for three weeks. No, you're not. So it's the right. same Life thing. Goes like on. If you, yeah. If you feel frozen in fear and disempowered by saying a world war, let's come up with some alternate terms that, you know, aren't denial based, but also say, well, what's happening? Uh, different um, countries and nations and structures have reached the end of their utility. Humanity, they ex they were, uh, many of them were formed so that people and nations could evolve and thrive and survive. And they, and maybe they did. And now, you know, like if you've ever been in a relationship that's run its course and then you're like, I still love this person, but I don't think we're growing anymore. In oh this my gosh. Structure. That's a great metaphor. Yeah. That makes so yeah. much sense. It, that's where I feel like we are now. Yeah, exactly. It's like, this isn't working anymore because it was, I mean, the Pluto return is so profound because it's like, well, 
we're not wearing, men aren't wearing tights and saying, hear ye, hear ye, (laughs) you know, so like this declaration of independence, you know, isn't really, obviously, you know, it's not even fully, you know, intact for everyone in America Mm -hmm. today, as we can see. So, yeah, maybe things have outlived their usefulness. And I, I, I hate that violence and death and destruction are what still are being used to it to uh to drive change Mm -hmm. but the change itself is needed so learn about what needs to change aside from war and see if you can see something for yourself that maybe you can uh affect leadership around even so i see And if you were to put it in a metaphor, basically you're saying the change must happen and some relationships end peacefully and mutually, right? But then other relationships don't. When one person still wants to stay the same or go back to how things used to be, then there's, there might be a fight. And I think that's what war is when some party wants something or they want to keep control, even though, you know, it might be over, right? So they, they fight, to Mm -hmm. or what they want and that's wow yeah yeah or they want it their way and they don't care what you want because their agenda is to get what they need exactly but this is the world we've been living in for quite a while i mean twitter itself is a war you've already been in a world war it's called twitter (laughs) every (laughs) day there's a war online a war of beliefs yeah oh god i mean like talk about and yet what is twitter also is like one of the best and fastest news sources exactly. like if i want to know if the traffic on the bridge or a bombing i'm going to twitter first so there's obviously something good about it yeah. but there's also this the awfulness of it is that people only see it their way most the majority and that's why we have wars it's like this is my agenda and i'm fighting for it mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter what you want, you know, and uh, we got a lot of human beings. This is when I start to go like, thank God, I believe in past lives. Which <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, this kind of brings up another topic I wanted to ask you about is the, ter- the concept called the fourth turning. And I know this is in some of your articles. I've learned about this concept too. It's, it's so fascinating. So can you explain what this is to our audience? I can. And um, I just want to acknowledge how smart and thoughtful your questions oh, are you. and how <laughs> nice it is to be able this to talk stuff about I this. think about <laughs> for the past couple of years. I love like, it. What's happening? Yeah. I love that you are because like we need to have these kind of conversations, especially in these spaces. It's yeah. very refreshing. Oh, and it's an you. honor to get to talk about this part of our work because it's what I love doing too. So thank you for this opportunity and for being so damn smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the four Fourth turning uh, was a concept. The people that came up with the the term millennials, Lewis and Howes, I think um, they wrote a book called The Fourth Turning, and they talk about how um, a generation, or they call the Latin word seculum, is kind of roughly uh, the uh, the average human lifespan, which is eighty four years. So me being an astrologer, I know that Uranus takes 84 years to go through the entire zodiac, and Neptune takes about 165, so that's twice that. And so I was like, hmm, I'm I'm sure you would do the same thing. It's like you go, oh, interesting. Let's see if there's anything behind that. So I looked at the founding of the USA, and I was like, well, what do you know? Uh, Neptune, uh, there was a war at every seculum, every 84 years. Wow. Um, the USA, uh, the, the Revolutionary War, then there was the Civil War, then there was World War One, And then now we're coming up on the next, yeah, and now we have the next one, which was also in 22 so oh, wow. Neptune, so I was like, and now we have Russia, so I'm like, Ugh. Is this the same um, thing as a, you said Neptune return or is it different? Um, it's half return. Oh, half. Neptune takes 165 years. So we had our Neptune return September 1st, 1945, I believe the end of World War II. Did I say World War One before? Sorry. I um, so <laughs> I don't know. There's so many world wars who can keep up. I'm just kidding. But yeah. Um, 
uh, maybe I shouldn't kid about that, but um, <laughs> uh, point being that we can trace these cycles to war or shall we say moments of activation. So this is, think about it's when change, the, the urge for change moves from potential to kinetic energy. Mm-hmm. That's really what a war is. Mm-hmm. When it builds enough momentum that an action is taken and planets can drive that. So a seculum is, um, is often a marker, a marker, the fourth turning is a marker that it's time for a new generation mm. with a whole new set of values to be born and created, hopefully not out of strife, hopefully out of peace or we're, we're working on it, people. <laughs> so please, everybody who's listening, keep evolving as a, as a being and a soul, because that's how we'll get out of having war be the expression of the desire and the drive right. for change. That's part of the human spirit. And to be clear, so you said it's a half Neptune cycle. Are we in, what dates, if there are any, define the fourth turning? Is that where we're in right now? You know, that's <laughs> just like the age of Aquarius. Oh, it's one of those debated, debatable um, one. But since we are in that next Neptune cycle, it could be happening now. Mm, so I see. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I do you have any um I guess examples of what happened the last time we were in this part of the cycle, or is that something you have to look into? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, 165 years ago we had the abolition of slavery. Oh. We had uh we're moving, yeah. It was actually a time of great um you know, the spiritualist movement happened uh, in the 1800s, mid 1800s. You know, they used to have seances in the White House, Abraham Lincoln's wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Supposedly his ghost haunts all the uh, the presidents. <laughs> oh, yeah, look that up. Oh. His Sagittarius wife was like all up in the Ouija board oh or whatever God. she's doing in there. Yeah. <laughs> The White House is haunted and infested with rats and r- mice and roaches. <laughs> okay. This is fact. Yeah, that is, I mean, I, I love looking at these trends and what happened the last time, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Maybe we need some ghosts up in there to take control, right? Uh, what sign is Neptune in right now? Like, doesn't the sign define... Pisces. Pi- oh, okay, okay. That's why there's like spiritual exactly. things related. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I see. <laughs> April 12th of uh, 2022 is a huge moment. Jupiter and Neptune are together mm. in, uh, in, Pisces, in Pisces and they're the co-rulers of Pisces. And what does that mean for you? Like, what do you expect to come out of that? I hope that that means like the opposite of war because Jupiter is about uh, optimism and hope and vision and global relations. And Neptune is about empathy and healing. So right. the positive expression would be that it could also, Neptune is also secretive underground things. So, Easy. you know, you never know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I really want to. I did hear somewhere that because we're, there's more Pisces going on that I think people who are spiritual are like, there's going to be more and more people becoming spiritual. And then people who have spiritual careers, like it might, they might get like a boost. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. It's great for that. Absolutely. And a less macro version. I mean, you look at the great resignation, like so oh, many yeah. people are leaving their job to figure out what their purpose is. I love it. Find it. I love yeah, it. Cause I this think- is what I was doing in my early twenties, but I felt like the rest of my peers were not doing that. They were working hard at a corporation work, you know, climbing the ladder. And now mm-hmm. people are all waking up in a sense to like, oh, I don't want to live this way. Like I, you know, we we have more opportunities. We, we open our eyes and I, I love that. And, you know, that's another great example. I love that you're so visionary. <laughs> um, and I, I love people who are natural entrepreneurs. You're Sagittarius moon, you're North Node and Aquarius. Like you've got that drive oh, to, thank to you. make a difference in the world. And um this is this kind of goes with that metaphor of war. Like a lot of people just go along with the status quo until the pain gets too great, and then a pandemic comes along, wipes out their job, or as they up. knew it, yeah, yeah, and then they take action. I so see. my advice is to for anyone who feels they're living too passively to like get out of fear 
and be more proactive about change. Learn to love change yes, instead of fear it. Yes. Like, what was it that had you be different than your peers? Oh, it's because I was, after I graduated, I decided to not get a job. I just didn't want to work. I wanted to be a creative, but I didn't know what I wanted (laughs) to do. So I really dabbled in like, I was acting, I was doing music. And then I started a YouTube channel and I felt very weird back then. But now, you know, social media has grown so much that it's, it's more normal. It's more accepted. But back then it was more, you know, uh, people were judgmental and everything. I'm sure they were. Well, what had you not caved to that? Because that's really important. You know, you have a, you have a secret superpower that you may not be aware of. Like, what was it that had you go, this is painful and uncomfortable and awkward, but something, but the other option is more painful. Yes, it was more, it would have been more painful to go that traditional route. I don't know, something within me just, I, I went through a little bit of depression my senior year of college and I felt like I, I was fighting against the world at that stage in my life. And I I think it was a rebellious stage. Like, I'm just going to live for me. Like, I am not going to follow your rules anymore. Like, I just had that kind of phase. (laughs) Yeah. Uh (laughs) It was something to do with Uranus, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) What year was that? Uh, For me, it was 2011, 2012 era. Oh, well, 2012 is when Neptune entered Pisces. Oh. And the spiritual age began. Yes. So, and Uranus went into Aries in 2010, 2011. So you actually were, you know, after you were there graduating college when two outer planets ended, you know, (gasps) yeah, seven and 10 years. Yeah. Uh That's so interesting. So the depression was probably actually you had rooted into uh, the familiarity of Uranus and Pisces and Neptune and Capricorn, and you maybe being an intuitive, uh, naturally felt them shifting and you mm-hmm. felt the generational, but you are already attuned to the changes that the world takes wow. 10 or 15 years to, to feel. So we can all tune our radars to that. If we, you know, do what you did naturally and listen, you, you took your Libra, ability to pause and listen and tune in and not just react and get a job or do something fear-based, but to, to go to, into cre- a created life. Wow. So, you know, you, yeah. Wow, I never, th- I never thought of it that way, but thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage, but I, I love how you encourage people and give them resources so that they can do that. I encourage everyone to be brave and listen to to what you're hearing, even if you think it sounds crazy or doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm all for that. That's what this podcast, that's what Lavender is all about. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. And yeah, obviously people are wanting that. So, (laughs) okay. So I have another question. So with all of these macro changes going on, I guess, what would you say is our collective's soul mission on earth at this time? That is a great question. Um, to listen, to listen more than uh, to respond instead mm-hmm. of react mm-hmm. or even to pause. Uh, kind of to what I was saying about Twitter and the wars everywhere. Uh, we human beings were um, we're not trained to be in the unknown and out of control. We're trained, we're wired to survive. And if we need, if we're going to evolve and truly survive, then we need to, we need to listen, uh, not from our experience, but from over there and from over here, you know, we can't negate our experiences, but we have to hear what the other person's is and try to hear it from what they would. It's very hard to do. It's real easy for me to say that. What do you think? Oh, our soul. Oh, I mean, it's a big question. <laughs> it is not easy it to is, answer. But I, but I I mean, I think a big part of the mission is stepping up and into that spirituality is recognizing you're not just what you're not just a regular person, like you're connected to everybody in the world. And with this polarity going on, it's like you said, it's like learning that there's going to be two extremes, but the goal is to like meet halfway and find somewhere in the middle or cooperate and make it work rather than like constantly arguing and fighting with each other. 
and and then like you know how to how do we use technology in a way that's beneficial and productive versus um, a way that destroys us destroys our our mentality and our because I think a lot you know technology is growing so fast and there's a lot of people who are becoming more spiritual but technology also has the power to you know move us away from spirituality you know you can get so plugged Mm -hmm. in and and I think that's a big question for me too because I love technology but I'm also you know I try to be spiritual (laughs) so so the question is like how do we move forward balancing these things like using these tools in a productive way, in a positive way, rather than it destroying everything. Yeah. It's the same thing with astrology, you know, like how do you use it as a tool instead of a rule or right. instead of being a tool of technology, you know, technology uses you too. If you, you know, so yes, to develop a healthy relationship, I'm just going to grab it over here. I'll go for it. Our 2022 book, um, because in it. Sorry, it was a little out of reach, That's but this okay. is our, we write a book oh, every year, our 2022 that. horoscope guide. I'll have to get you one. Um, I can give you the link if anyone wants to get sure, it. It's we'll the whole the year notes. for every sign. Yeah. But we wrote an introduction calling 2022 the year of the new abnormal. So in that is a message to like, we're, there are some years where things are like, it's time to go, it's time to change, it's time to make and build. And some where, again, you have to be like, no, I don't know what normal is. The old normal's done. The new normal's still forming. Be in the new abnormal. Embrace it. Right. Yeah, I think the, the period we're in is just learning to be un- okay with being uncertain. <laughs> like, we don't know what the future yeah. looks like yet. We're in the, the process of change and rebirth. So... Hang on. <laughs> if you can't just hold on. Exactly. <laughs> if you can't do that, be okay with not being okay. Right. With being uncertain. Uh, like, you know, be like, I'm not that. okay with it. I don't know how to define it. And I'm going to be okay with that. <laughs> that's like the next level. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's a little too macro meta, but everything is meta oh now. My gosh. So let's make our, you know, everything meta. Yeah. Oh right. my God. Okay. So um, <laughs> another question I have for you as we wrap up is how can we use astrology as a tool in our everyday life from planning, mm-hmm. you know, from the micro level to the macro level for, you know, just for our audience. Yeah. Well, uh, the book I just held up is a great tool for it because we have the hot spot dates of every month listed out there. So you can plan it by the planets is what I like to say. Micro, you want to do the, the inner planets. That's, uh, you know, all the planets, uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, the moon, is, it's not a planet, but we count it. The ones that are closest to the sun and move pretty quickly. So they impact our day-to-day lives. Learn a little bit about those, about your sign, do your chart. Um, and, and that can help us get ahead of like, okay, next week is like this, or today is like this, or tomorrow, any proactivity. You know, I've, I read a statistic that the average person makes 38,000 decisions a day. And over like over 2000 of them are about food. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all a little fatigued. Yeah. We could all use some help with our, you know, with planning. And then on a macro level, um, you know, on astrostyle.com on our website, we have a lot of articles and we're, we're putting up a new design for our site in a couple of weeks too. There's going to be a, a big expansion of our library. We're really committed because there's such interest in astrology to, oh, yeah. to educate people on how to use it as a tool with the macro, outer, slow-moving generational planets, how to really understand yourself. There's plenty of resources on the web too, uh, but I can only vouch for the ones that I write. Um, but I, you know, fully, although there's some great ones out there, but kind of and observe, keep a journal, be in the dance with the stars, like see if, you know, read your horoscope at the end of the day or read your, you know, uh, our book also has like the whole year and the bigger trends. We, we have a, a, a little mini chapter for every planet and what it's doing. So it'll be a great way to start yourself off on learning what these historical trends mean. And, you know, like once you really get it, it gets so it's like almost like addictively. Fascinating. It is. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love Mm -hmm. that. Okay. So we'll link all your book and all the resources in the show notes. So you guys definitely check it out. 
Um, any last thoughts that you want to share to our listeners? Hmm. Well, if there's one part of your chart that I think is great to learn about that can empower you, it's your North and South nodes. Your South node is your past lives. It's your natural gifts and talents, what you came into the, it's the magic and the superpower you were born with and you have an abundant supply of. So you can always lean on it when times get lean. If we do find ourselves in a crisis, you can reach into that and, and pull it out for whatever you need. But then there's also your North Node, which is why you're here, why you were born at this time, what you're here to evolve into. That's always in the opposite side. So the North and South Nodes, I'll give you our link for that too. Um, if you know nothing else about your destiny, they will give you the, the bottom line roadmap to your life purpose and your special gifts that you have to share and how you're here to evolve. So empower yourself with that and you'll feel like, you know why you're here. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Do you like the note? I, I do. do. I right? love the notes because I love talking about your yeah. purpose. And so I, I think I've even mentioned it in a video before that if you mm -hmm. want to know your you purpose, did. look to your North <laughs> node and that will give you a clue. Um, another thing I want to say about the North node is it kind of like, I guess everyone born in the same year, maybe two years has the same North node. So it's kind of, um, it defines the people who are the similar age as you. Um, and then yep. I guess quick note on that, since I am an Aquarius North Node. So for anyone who has Aquarius North Node, can you, I guess, briefly explain what it means since we are going into more Aquarius in Absolutely. the world? Um, what does it mean for yes, us? Yes, yes, yes. So those, you know, and, and your age group too, with the Aquarius North Node is, you know, the early 30s, mm -hmm. uh, those born from 1989 to 91, kind of... Um, yeah, early 90. Yeah, I think it was 90. It was the end of 90. Sorry. Um, so I don't know. Computer in my head. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, uh, you are here to lead us into the new age, into the Aquarian age, you know, through with technology, but with also your Leo South node, you have, bit, you have heart, you have creativity. That's what you have as a superpower. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, 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 Everything, if the energy grid went out tomorrow, God forbid, um, you could lean into your Leo creativity and warmth and heart and organize everybody and even, you know, somehow manage to make it into a weird party of some kind. <laughs> but you're really here to get us to see that higher ideal. Um, oh my God, remember the, the Parkland the Parkland shootings that happened with like David Hogg and the, that the, those were all kids who had Aquarius South note and oh. they organized against gun. So you can see the, yeah, yeah. The, the mission, the assignment, that your soul group from your nodes. Wow. has. So yeah, we have all the dates of the nodes on our, in the article. So you can see which soul group you were born into. And right now the, the North node has just gone into Taurus mm -hmm. collectively for all of us. And so what does January. that mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's the South nodes net since January 18th of 2022 until July 17th, 2023, the South nodes in Scorpio, the North nodes in Taurus. These are the money. Scorpio is war and destruction <gasps> and the low vibe, oh. but also deep transformation, power and control. It's ruler of Pluto. And Taurus is the economy, money, stability, our day-to-day -day lives. So we are dramatically transforming our day-to-day -day lives, lifestyles, routines, relationship to money, power, uh, all the things we've just started to see. Yeah. That makes so yeah, much so, sense. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, gosh, as you can see, there is no bottom yeah, to there's the no end to this. hole of astrology, <laughs> but I'm happy to talk about it any, any other time you want. So. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm just curious, do you look to astrology every single day for your own personal life? Like, is it a huge tool? Is <laughs> Do you think it is you know what? Yeah. my astrology or does it always go according to what the planets say? <laughs> I may defy it, but I, you know, live to regret it when I do. No, I, I just 
know what'll happen? I'll, I'll, I won't be paying attention sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just like, oh my God. I mean, the best example is like in t- 2010, I wrote, oh, on January 17th, Jupiter will go into Pisces and Sagittarians may find themselves pregnant in the next year. Well, I forgot that that applied to me. And then what happens? I take a pregnancy test that day and find out I'm having my daughter. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Now. I was like, oh, right. That's my horoscope. You wrote too. your own I'm horoscope. <laughs> Yeah. And since I write them like a couple months in advance, I wasn't thinking about it. Oh, that's hilarious. You know, it sneaks up on you. But I like to, I like to know where the moon is going to be every day. So it's something you check every day and you're in tune with what's happening. It's like checking the weather. Like if you don't, it might rain and well, too bad if you forgot your umbrella, you're getting wet, you'll survive. But you know, better to, why not plan it by the planets and be prepared? Right. Right. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Ophi, for coming today. I had so much fun. Oh my God. Me too. This is like the kind of conversations I love to have. So thank you for letting me nerd out with you about the macroness of of astrology. Yes. And, and lastly, where can we all find you online? Uh, any social media platform, Astro Twins. I think there's, you know, TikTok is, you know, I'm not, you know, I have, I'm on That's there, okay. but not so much. It's I okay. prefer Insta. Yeah, I know. It's like love, hate, but mm-hmm. Instagram preferably. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, astrostyle.com. We also have uh, a mm-hmm. lot of courses for anyone who wants to learn about astrology from basics to feng shui. To, mm-hmm. We have a whole astropreneur's career uh, and entrepreneur program that's at galaxy.astrostyle.com, all of our classes and memberships. So, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And I hope to speak Ooh. to you again. This was so much fun. <laughs> I would love to. Uh, I'm here. So thank you. I can't wait to see what you create with your new podcast, video podcast. (laughs) Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.